lot of times we'll say common sense, but the other side either doesn't have common sense or they really hate us. And let's take one more. I'm looking at that big, powerful guy there. I don't know. Who's a better looking guy? Let me, <laughs> let me see. I don't know. He looks good. Anybody has a question? Go ahead, ma'am, please. Go ahead. As a member of Moms for Liberty, yes. uh, parental rights and education are top priorities. Yes. Seems like schools have become indoctrination camps where they're focused on sexualizing our children, and it's just not right. How do we get back to the basics in the classroom, teaching, you know, reading, writing. And arithmetic. Uh, history, right. That's right. And civics. Thank well, you, Mr. President. You know, everything I said tonight, they could say, he's conservative, he's got a wonderful conservative voice. Actually, it's a voice of common sense. And with education, almost, in many ways, easier than other things, we have to get back to common sense. And that is reading, writing, or arithmetic. What they're teaching in schools today is insane. And most people understand it. Even the people that want it, they understand it. So we're going to do something. And a lot has to do with your governors and your people that are leading your states. And, you know, they're going to be given free reign to do what they want to do. You happen to have a great governor that's very much into it. And she's taken this state so far. And we'll have other governors doing the same thing. And it's a really great question. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, question over here. Go ahead, please. Yeah. Mr. President, our farmers are under attack from increased fuel and fertilizers yes. prices. At the same time, we're demonized by Washington and climate life leftists. How do we protect our farmers from the activist EPA and reduce the costs for our Iowa farmers? So you were totally protected two and a half years ago. Hard to believe it's two and a half. We have a year and a half to go. It seems so short now when you had to think in terms of much longer. But you were totally protected like never before. I think you would say like never before. We will bring that back so fast your head will spin. A big thing is to get the fuel price down. Once that fuel price comes down, a lot of other things are going to happen, including the fertilizer, which I hear is a disaster for farmers right now. So we're going to take care of all of it, and it'll happen very, very fast, very, very quickly. Okay? Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Mr. Over Mr. Here. President? Go ahead. Over here, somebody. I, I, Mr. President, yes. I'm full of gratitude for everything you have done for us and are doing for us, uh, for we the people. I'd just like to ask. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And what So we, far, I love this question. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready for the kill. So go ahead. What can you do to bring back manufacturing jobs? Well, I was doing that, and one of the things we were doing is making it very difficult to have auto plants in Michigan and all leave our country. We had almost nobody leaving during my administration. And one of the things you do is you have to tax some of these products that come back into this country because you have to make it competitive. I saved the dishwashing industry, I saved the washer dryer, the many industries because they were dumping product. It wasn't as good, but it was pretty good. And they were dumping product into the United States. I saved so many different uh, manufacturers. If you look at Whirlpool in Ohio, they, they had such a problem. Uh, Korea, South Korea was dumping, and China, thousands and thousands, millions of units in at, at a price that is just, it, it, they, wouldn't, they weren't going to work. And I ended that, I put a 50% tariff on, and I was with them. That part of Ohio is thriving today. It's thriving, and those companies are doing great. So we have to look at individuals, but we will uh, be able to handle that situation very easy. Don't forget, we have a thing, we have a power called the economy. We have a very powerful engine. And the problem is we have people that really don't know how to use it. They don't know how to use it to our collective advantage, but I know how to use it. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, question over here. Thank you, President Trump. Under Biden, the installed president, we are seeing mobs of illegals coming across our border. Just this last week, we saw a violent mob try to force their way across the border near El Paso. What can we do to finally secure our southern border and finish the wall? It'll be secured on day one, and then we have to make a decision. What do we do with the 15 million people that have invaded our country, okay? And we'll do the right thing, that I tell you. 
We will start by getting the bad ones out. And the sheriffs and law enforcement, who we love, the sheriffs know every one of them that shouldn't be here. You know every one of them that shouldn't be here. And we'll take care of, we'll take care of business. Go ahead. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead. Mr. President, the mainstream media came after you and your family like crazy. But not one of them seems interested in investigating the Biden crime family or Hunter's laptop. They also censored anyone who asked questions in 2020. How do we get to the bottom of this? So the mainstream media had a very high approval rating when I announced I was running for president. And just today I read where it reached an all-time low because people are wise to what's been happening. What they have done, they really are a political arm of the Democrat Party. It's, it's a terrible thing. You saw, you saw last couple of weeks where the FBI and Twitter, it's called Twitter Files, where they work together and they work together with Facebook. You couldn't say anything good about Trump and you couldn't say anything bad about Biden. They had the laptop. They knew all about the laptop. They knew all these crimes are on the laptop and they weren't allowed to do anything. They weren't allowed to talk. And frankly, they have that liberal inclination anyway. But the, even if they wanted to, they couldn't do it. I think we're making a lot of progress. I think that the that Congress is doing a very good job now. We have some people. Nancy Pelosi is packing. She's gone. Getting her out is a big, that's a big step. And I think Kevin and all of the people in Congress, I tell you what, you know, that whole, people thought it was a fiasco. I think it was a beautiful thing as it turned out. That five or six nights of voting and voting and voting and voting, I actually think that was like a cleansing action. It was a great thing that happened. And there's great unity in Congress. We do have to do something about Mitch McConnell. He's a, he's a disaster. He's a disaster. He, he gets his 10 guys and they give Biden whatever they want. There's something going on that doesn't make sense. They give him whatever they want. He gets his 10, 12 guys and they vote in order to give the passage because you need the 60 votes usually. And, they vote and they give him what he wants. I just cannot understand. Nobody can understand it. We got to get him the hell out. He's a problem. Big problem. In the meantime, I hope he's feeling well, but he's a big problem. Okay, go ahead. We'll take one or two more. Go ahead. Hello, Miss. Hello, Mr. President. Got to be a good one. You know, if it's a good one, I'm out of here, right? If it's a bad one, I'll, I've got to take a couple of more to get over the stench of the bad one. I just want to say it's an honor to hear you speak. Thank first you. Of all. But my question for you is, what can you do to combat transgender athletes taking over women's sports? Well, you've done it here because your governor's passed legislation. You can't. No, it's crazy. It's it's like how does uh, people are seriously in favor of having it done. And I don't understand it. And I tell the story of that champion swimmer and she's there and she's looking up and down the line. She sees friends that she's been swimming with. She's a champion. And then she sees this person next to her. And he's a monster. He looks like Wilt Chamberlain, but a little bit different. She sees the guy has a wingspan. She's like looking up and down. Then she looks up. Wow. And, uh, you know, he broke all these records. And it's just a it, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. You would almost say, and I said it once before tonight, but you would almost say it's people that want to hurt our country because it doesn't make sense. And that one's a very easy one to figure. Anyway, you've got it done in Iowa. A lot of other states are doing it. Some states are going the opposite direction, which is shocking. It's shocking. But we'll get it done throughout the country. It's going to happen. It's happening. It's just common sense. It's a great question, too. Okay. Yes, please. Go ahead. See you. Mr. President, my grocery bills are going up every week. As someone on a fixed income, that really hurts. And it feels like Joe Biden doesn't even care about us in so-called flyover country. How are we going to fix these prices under control? You said groceries, right? Yes. The groceries are horrible. I mean, you look at eggs and you look at bacon and you look at just what we used to consider staples and you see the kind of numbers. A lot of it's going to have to do with energy. Once the energy comes down, a lot of other things are going to follow. Energy is so big, it's so powerful, it's so impactful that once the energy comes down, you're going to see a lot of good things happen. And we have more energy than any other country in the world, more than Saudi Arabia, more than Russia. I call it liquid gold, and it's right under our feet. I mean, when you look at the craziness, we're allowed to go to Venezuela to take their energy, and it's horrible. It's tar. 
It's bad. It pollutes. You know where they uh, refine it? In Houston. So they talk about the environment, but they bring it from Venezuela to Houston because that's the only place that has the refineries for this kind of very bad potential oil. And they refine it in Houston. So if you're a big believer in that, all that stuff is going up in our country. And it's just incredible. We have the greatest energy in the world. You know, I approved something. I was very proud of it. Anwar, Alaska. And Anwar is the biggest, probably, probably the biggest site anywhere in the world. And probably bigger than Saudi Arabia. Just that one in Alaska. And Reagan tried to do it. He couldn't get it done. Bush tried to do it. He couldn't get it done, of course. And other people couldn't get it done. Nobody could get it done. I got it done. And the first day in office, they terminated Anwar. And uh, this would have been incredible to have for our country. I mean, literally, we were going to become energy dominant. We would have made, because it's a big, big industry, we would have made so much money that we would have started paying off debt, lowering taxes still further. We would have done something that nobody's ever seen before because we have so much. You know, I filled up the strategic national reserves. I knew not much about it. I said, what are the reserves that we want to fill up and that's been taken for years and years down to a low level? And I made a great deal. I got very little credit for it. I bought when our, when our oil price hit like these crazy low numbers. That's when I asked a question because we had so much. I said, what about filling in the, the caverns? These are these massive, as in, in Louisiana and various other salt, like the salt mines, the big, massive salt mines. And I bought 75 million barrels for peanuts and filled it very close up to the top. We were going to be topping it out. And then Biden, just before the election, in order to keep prices a little low, he released all of that, and now we've set a record low. They've taken all of it and then some, and we have the lowest that they've ever seen it right now. It's the lowest that they've ever seen, meaning the reserves themselves. We had it filled up almost to the top, would have been topped out at really low prices. And by the way, now they have to pay three to four times more than what I was paying. And the Democrats fought me all the way. They got us stopped, actually, for a while. They fought me all the way at a price that was 25 percent of what they have to pay right now. So it's, uh, it's a crazy thing. And a lot of times we'll say common sense, but the other side either doesn't have common sense or they really hate us. And let's take one more. I'm looking at that big, powerful guy there. I don't know. Who's a better looking guy? Let me, <laughs> let me see. I don't know. He looks good. They look, they look good. You, you, look, you look fantastic. And we love you. Ah, thank you very much. I appreciate uh, it. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you. You're the greatest executive I've ever observed in my lifetime. And I think you've made it possible for governors, including Kim Reynolds, whom I love and respect for many years, to become the really high-level executives by your example. Now, you have passed legislation, or got legislation passed for, like, the wall, it got paid for, it was passed, you signed it, and then there was the uh, XL Keystone Pipeline. All of these things have to do with interstate commerce. Right. There are Section 1, or, or Article 1, Section 8 in the Constitution. Biden had no authority in law to reverse those things. And what would you do to see to that never happens again under your watch through your actions and with the legislation? Well, the keys sound great. I love your question. I like your statement even more than your question, to be honest with you. This could be the last question of the night, because I love it. Appreciate it. Appreciate the job you do also. Do you know each other? Sheriff, do you know each other? Do you know who that is, that man? Huh? Huh? I know Bobby. Yeah, I love this guy. I love them both. It's ready? So I think what, hap what has to happen, uh, and it's very simple. The Keystone Pipeline was a tragic mistake that they made. That was so much coming from other parts, and it was going right into the source. Everything would have been — it would have been so great. And by the way, environmentally much safer. The wall — I built hundreds of miles of wall, but I ended up getting uh, — I want to use a nice word because we have such young people here — but the word that would normally be used would be screwed. But I wouldn't use that word because I don't want to get in trouble with the parents of these two beautiful young boys. No, what they did is they took advantage of the American public. 
And we built hundreds of miles, but there was other areas that we could have built. I ended up having to take it out of the military because I considered it an invasion. And the Army Corps of Engineers did a fantastic job. We built hundreds of miles of it. But I didn't get it the old-fashioned way, like getting it approved, because the Democrats fought us every inch. We had 11 lawsuits. It took us two and a half years. We won all of them. But we had 11 lawsuits to win. They, fight, they tried to fight the wall. But the bottom line is, it, it sort of shows, that's a good example. If you want to get something done, if you love our country, and you really want, if it's so important, you're going to get it done. You're going to find a way to get it done. This was sort of ingenious. We passed this big military budget. But we couldn't get a wall built for a tiny fraction of that. And I said, this is an invasion of our country. And it is, by the way. This is an invasion of our country, what's coming across our border. It's no different than soldiers. And they're bringing a lot of different problems than soldiers would bring. They're not bringing merely bullets, and they're bringing plenty of them. But they're causing tremendous problem for our country. And it's a problem that we may have a very, very long Unless we do something quickly, and we have to do it smart, and we have to work with law enforcement to do it properly, it's not going to be easy. But they're hurting our country. They're killing the blood, the life stream of our country, and we're going to do something about it. But why they killed the Keystone, I have no idea. And the union, representing all of those thousands of workers, 48,000 workers, they endorsed, the union endorsed Biden. But all the workers are for Trump, okay? But the head guy endorsed Biden. And what did Biden do? Probably the second or third day in office, he terminated the Keystone Pipeline. So, you know, so the people in that union uh, are not too happy. They're not too happy. But look, bottom line is we have to use common sense and we have to do a little bit like Kim or a lot like Kim and some other governors. You know, Kim, you would be the first to admit we have some great governors, Republican governors, perhaps some Democrats too, but they don't seem to have our policies at all. You look at any Democrat-run state, and it's just not the same. It doesn't work. You look at these cities, our great cities are New York City is a crime den. Chicago is a crime den. You look at these great cities, Los Angeles, San Francisco, you look at what's happening to our country. We cannot let it happen any longer. And one of the other things I'll do, because, you know, you're supposed to not be involved in that. You just have to be asked by the governor or the mayor to come in. The next time, I'm not waiting. One of the things I did was let them run it, and we're going to show how bad a job they do. Well, we did that. We don't have to wait any longer. We got to get crime out of our cities. Thank you very much for a good question. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Kim, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.